All right, as we uh, have people enter in, we'll probably start in about 30 seconds. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started and people can keep trickling in. Um, good morning, everyone, and happy new year. Um, welcome to our Workforce Wednesday webinar series powered by the Florida Chamber Foundation's Future of Work Initiative. Um, my name is Rachel Ludwig. I'm the Senior Director of Future of Work here at the Florida Chamber Foundation, and I'm really excited to offer this webinar series to discuss a variety of talent pipelines, strategies, and solutions. And I'm thrilled about our speakers today, and they're truly experts at what they do and will provide with you with many examples of post-secondary partnerships to grow talent pipelines. You can go to the next slide. Just a few housekeeping items before we get started. So webinar participants are encouraged to use the Q&A function in Zoom. Um, and we'll leave time to answer those questions at the end. And if we run out of time, I'll be sure to follow up with you um, kind of offline. Today's agenda includes a few updates um, for from the Florida Center of Workforce and Talent Development and presentations from three of our Future of Work Advisory Board members, as well as an educational leader with decades of experience who I work closely with in my prior role. Um, I'm so excited to have our speakers today and grateful for their leadership and continued support of our initiative. You can go to the next slide. We always want to start by sharing some high-level information from our 2030 blueprint, um, which is our North Star, including our six pillars and 39 goals that guide all of our work at the Florida Chamber. Um, we're projected to continue seeing tremendous growth here in Florida um, with 20, I'm sorry, 2.8 million net new residents. And we need to create now 1.21 million net new jobs by 2030 to keep pace with that growth. Um, we did move up the ranks um, in terms of our position in the global economy. So now we are the 15th largest global economy. Florida was a country, um, which is exciting. Uh, you can see the box outlined on your screen, which represents the goals of the talent pipeline pillar. And we know that improving Florida's talent pipeline for a better workforce is critical to move the needle. Um, and really these goals cover everything from early learning through lifelong learning. You can go to the next slide. So I like to show this slide um, and you can kind of track where our numbers go. Um, and uh, we continue to see unemployment um, that is less than the national um, average. And we see that only 83 people are looking for work for every 100 jobs are posted. And so those are statewide numbers. Um, it's, you can see these numbers for your county on the floridascorecard.org. Um, it provides a lot of metrics um, for our 2030 blueprint. It's also interesting to, to notice the difference in all the counties throughout the state. And so you can, again, find that information on the floridascorecard.org. Um, you can go to the next slide. So we know that the Future of Work initiative really aims to unite the business community and workforce and education partners to create awareness of mid to high wage, high demand careers, as well as the pathways to get there. Um, you know, we know that there's a disconnect in what employers and parents and learners all perceive um, in terms of what career um, opportunities are available. So our Future of Work initiative is really a close partnership with the Florida Department of Education, Career Source, and others. You can go to the next slide. Our Florida Center for Talent and Workforce Development is really combining um, decades worth of research as well as talent development initiatives um, for a variety of talent pools. And I want to encourage you to check out our public facing tools. Again, I mentioned it earlier, but the floridascorecard.org as well as the floridagapmap.org. Um, we are, you know, looking at promoting these top 30 and 2030 high demand careers. And we're in the planning process actually of launching a website with 
tools available for parents, for employers, for teachers, guidance counselors, et cetera, to be able to use this information to really help our learners understand where um, the opportunities exist. So you can go to the next slide. Um, I mentioned that 2030 um, high demand careers earlier, and I'm going to show you actually a, a few lists. Um, I like to show um, kind of peel back the onion a little bit and show show the lists um, as by region. And so what I'm going to show you today is actually where our speakers are are located. Um, just to kind of put that out there, that these lists are created by um, total opening, so people expected to retire or move on from their positions or growth um, openings. And you can go to the next slide. So the last time I actually showed the top 25 for Region 24, this is where Kristen Ventella, one of our um, speakers is located. Um, and here is the regional list for um, Indian River State College. This is actually three of their four counties. Um, this is where Bill Solomon is located. Um, and this is Indian River, Martin and St. Lucie counties. Um, and you can see a lot of uh, a mix of education requirements as well as career clusters represented. Um, and you can go to the next slide to show the 11 through 20 here. Um, 11 through 20 actually includes um, more bachelor's degrees required here. Um, and if you go to the next slide, you'll kind of see the last two. Um, so it's interesting. I know you were thinking like, oh, this is the top 30 in 2030. So for, for the way that we curated this list and the criteria, there were 22 occupations that met the criteria for growth openings and replacement openings. So you can kind of see it's an interesting list. Um, and I'm going to show you the next list, which is actually going to pivot quite a lot from this list. This is actually region six, where Mary Keene at River Oak Technical College is located. So if you know where these counties are, it's a pretty rural part of the state in North Florida. And there's actually 10 careers that met their criteria. Um, so it's you know, just really important that we are promoting these careers. I know that Mary, from my visit um, at River Oak is it has programs for for these careers and um and then the last set I'll show you if you go to the next slide is kind of a special um addition for today um knowing we would have uh Brooke Malsberger on from Lockheed Martin join us so Brooke and I have had several conversations about STEM careers and I pulled regional data from Region 13 and that's Brevard County so Brevard County is very unique when you look at the high demand careers and you'll notice that it's full of STEM careers. Um, the first 10 actually have many careers that are repeated from other lists, such as project managers, you know, operation managers, software developers, RNs, accountants, etc. Um, but if you go to the next slide, it's kind of where it starts to get interesting. You know, you start to see the engineering careers really dominating the rest of the list um, from here on out. So we have everything from industrial to aerospace to electrical, the computer hardware engineers, um, and just STEM is just highly represented here. Um, if you go to the final um, 21 through 30, you'll see even more. So, you know, mechanical engineers, logisticians, electronics engineers, aircraft mechanics, we were just talking about that earlier before this webinar started, um, cybersecurity, et cetera. So it's really fascinating just how this specific region looks different from the others in terms of the top 30. Um, I mentioned earlier, we do have all 24 workforce development regions, these lists created. Um, some of the regions have far more than 30, some don't have 30. So it just depends on the region. Um, so if you go to the next slide, um, before I introduce our first speaker, I just always want to thank our Future of Work Advisory Board. They represent a range of industries and talent development professionals who provide, you know, thought leadership in recruiting and retaining talent and support this initiative. It would not be possible, the work that we're doing without this, their support. Um, and three of them you'll meet today on this call, so we're super excited. Um, we are looking to expand the advisory board. We have 10 seats available. So if you, um, you know, are, are interested in joining this, this group of thought leaders um, and are representing, you know, one of these high demand careers or high demand industries that I mentioned, feel free to email me. I'd love to have a conversation with you offline. Um, if you go to the next slide. 
So I'm going to share our speaker lineup for today, and I'm going to introduce kind of each one as, as we go. i um, really excited, again, to have all of them today. We're so lucky. Um, first, we have Kristen Vincello. Uh, she's Assistant Vice President um, of Innovative Education and Partnerships at Florida Gulf Coast University. And Kristen is an integral part of the work that's happening in Southwest Florida. We're so lucky to have her recently join our board. Um, and thank you so much for being here today, Kristen. Well, thank you. I'm so pleased to be here and joining this wonderful group of folks to share some of the initiatives and progress that we're making here in Southwest Florida. Um, so go ahead and advance to the next slide if you don't mind. Um, I'd like to start by telling you a little bit about FGCU. Um, I hope everyone knows that we are one of the state university system institutions located in Southwest Florida Workforce Region 24, as mentioned by Rachel. Um, and, you know, we are 26 years new. So as one of the newest institutions, we, we really do pr take pride in our innovation and our ability to pivot and really work collaboratively with our colleagues here in Southwest Florida and throughout the state. Um, Traditionally, however, the state universities have focused primarily on how we can support the workforce needs through educational programming at the undergraduate and graduate level. So FGCU, um, for the first time this year, we have uh, just exceeded 16,000 students enrolled, primarily in our undergraduate programs. Um, we do offer 26 master's degree programs, and we have seven different doctoral areas of study. So we really still are very focused in some of those get-to-work ready to work baccalaureate degree pathways and master's pathways. And what I can share is that as a regional comprehensive institution, we are extremely committed um, and we continue to be very responsive to the employment needs within Southwest Florida. So you can imagine, you know, our colleges of academic study really, really align with our major employment areas. So, so areas like education, um, our health programming, engineering, um, traditional arts and sciences programs, entrepreneurship, um, in addition to business. So if we advance to the next slide, I'd like to tell you about what we've launched over the past four years. Um, we know that we have great opportunity to have an impact with short-term credentials and things that we could do to really improve the talent pipeline between our institution and our regional and statewide employers. I mean, in some cases, those are also global employers. Um, so four years ago, under the leadership of our now president, Dr. Asha Goldtimmer, we started a micro-credential and digital badge initiative. And it truly took us you know, a good amount of time to really wrap our heads around what that meant and what our role would be as a comprehensive state institution um, serving the Southwest Florida region. So we moved forward um, to develop micro-credentials, which really are meant to be a, a mastery of specific competencies, skills, and abilities that have been defined in partnership with employers. And those individuals that successfully complete that additional criteria or micro-credential program that we develop earn a digital badge. And that digital badge is, as you can see, a visual emblem that helps validate those competencies and skills and makes it extremely transparent to our employers. So if we look at the next slide, you'll see um, what that means in terms of a digital credential. You know, many of us that um, have gone through traditional higher education left with a diploma and a transcript showing every course that we took, um, but it didn't really give more detail than the name of the courses, the grades we received, the um, and the credit hours that we received for each of those, those courses that we completed. So these new digital credentials really provide our students and our employers with more transparent information about what the learning experience entailed, what competencies and skills an individual needed to acquire and demonstrate in order to earn the credential, and gives that information in a digital way that, that a student or a participant or a community member who goes through a program can share that very easily on an application for jobs, um, on, their, on their CV, on their LinkedIn profile, you know, wherever they can embed a link, they can show their digital credential. So we have moved forward, um, if you'll go to the next slide, to be very intentional with building that talent pipeline, as I mentioned, between our programs of study and our students at FGCU and the regional employers here in Southwest Florida. So one of our um, types of digital badges that we award is specifically called industry specific. And that means that we have found opportunity working with our employers to really connect 
academic programs or courses in our curriculum with that um, micro-credential opportunity. So in each of the examples that you see here on the page, working with employers such as Hertz, Arthrex, Lee Health, Gartner, and Neogenomics, we've designed actual um, courses or series of courses that either already existed at FGCU or might be new to our curriculum that really get into the details of these different topical areas. Um, from there, the students um, if you go to the next slide, you'll see the journey that a student would take as they go through this type of a micro-credential program. So essentially, the student begins by enrolling in a course or series of courses that we've identified as part of that pathway to the micro-credential and digital badge. And once the students fulfill the criteria that we create along with our faculty and members of our industry, um, then students have that opportunity to pursue the micro-credentials. So it's not something that everyone will earn just by going through a course or series of courses at the institution is something they really have to qualify for with the best of the best of the students who really have mastered the curriculum that we've offered at FGCU that's related to these competencies and skills that are defined as important by our employers. So once the students have gone through the course, they then have the opportunity to go on for that micro-credential additional um, content. We've termed that the power of and at FGCU. So it's students take the course or courses or they're here to get a bachelor's degree or a graduate degree and they're going a step above by showing their commitment to an employment or an industry. And so the student goes through that opportunity and we have developed those courses and the content along with our industry and community partners. Um, and so we're able to respond nimbly and quickly by creating that content that really makes an impact for the employers in our industry. So the student, once they've completed all of the criteria, they earn a digital badge. And in every case on that last slide, um, the students are guaranteed an interview with those employers. So as we move forward and look at some of our other options that we've, we've afforded our students and members of our community, we've created two additional types of digital badges at FGCU. The first is transferable skills. And this is something that's directed at our undergraduate student population. These are aligned with the National Association of Colleges and Employers and the, the competencies and skills that they have identified as critical um, to close the workforce skills gaps that, that emerge um, time and time again. So FGCU has launched 10 transferable skills, digital badges, and things like critical thinking, oral and written communication, teamwork, leadership. And what we have done is created a two-pronged approach for our students to create that portfolio of the best artifacts that demonstrate their competency in any one of those 10 skill areas, but not just bring those things together and say, these are the best examples of when I have communicated effectively or when I have really applied my critical thinking and problem-solving skills. That's part Part one. But part two is where we bring our employers in to say, now let's interview our students. Let's hear how they talk about these skills and how they can then translate that in an employer's world to say, I, I can walk in the door and be a strong critical thinker for you and let me give you an example. So we bring our employers to help us interview our students. Um, we've done that both in a Zoom um, capacity. We've done that through um, opportunities on our campus. Um, and sometimes those have turned into actual interviews. So in this area, we also are guaranteeing interviews to our students. And then the third is through continuing education, because we know that learning doesn't stop the moment that someone has completed a credential. In fact, it's, it's moving so rapidly in things like artificial intelligence and technical skills that many of our, our programs and courses that students complete in a traditional educational environment are outdated by the time they even graduate or start their first career-based employment. So we really are very committed as an institution to responding as best we can to provide those upskilling and reskilling opportunities. And this is just an example of some things that we've developed very um, specifically with Lee Health, really the largest provider, um, I'm sorry, Sorry, largest employer in the Southwest Florida region. So we have a first time supervisor program where we've brought in every one of these examples, we brought the leaders from Lee Health to help us develop that curriculum and really talk about why these skills and why these programs are of utmost importance to them as a culture and them as uh, an employer. And so that's something that we've done. And this is just a snapshot of examples of things that, that we've done that we think um, can really be replicated and expanded throughout Florida. And with that, I believe we'll turn to our next employer, or I'm sorry, our next presenter.
Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in. Kristen, thank you so much. I mean, you all are just doing amazing things in Southwest Florida. It's kind of a dream of just, you know, the, the collaboration with employers and letting them drive things and you're responding really rapidly. So that's awesome. Um, if you go to the next slide, I'm going to introduce Bill Solomon next. He is our future work advisory board member as well and is the Dean of Workforce Education at Indian River State College. They have a beautiful new advanced manufacturing facility there that we got to tour last spring um, when it was kind of still in the works. But thank you so much for being here today, Bill. Thank you. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here and good morning to everybody. Um, yeah, as Rachel said, we, we just built a brand new um, $42 million workforce education building that has basically um, our new automotive, um, which includes a new um, uh, EV program that we're, we're developing so that we can deal with the batteries and the electronic or the electric vehicles. Um, our traditional welding, but also has the robotic welders, um, HVAC, and then we put in um, advanced manufacturing. So the mechatronics, the logistics, all those pieces, because that's what's really in demand in our area for sure um, here on the Treasure Coast. Um, and just so you know, we opened up in August, we're already at capacity. So my building is full and we could probably double that size and, and still uh, not meet, meet the needs that are, are necessary in this area. Um, this is a result of what happened um, three years ago. We got a new president in Dr. Timothy Moore. And Dr. Moore um, came in uh, in the height of COVID, all kinds of issues that we had with that we were all fighting together um, and saw that there was a little uh, a little possibility on the books with this new with this new building. And so he said, well, let's just go for it. And we started building this building and we started to really undergo a change at Indian River to figure out, OK, who we are and what are we doing for our students? Um, the, the issue that we have for state colleges in general is, um, you know, who is IRSC? What, what, what do you bring to the table? Why is state college? Um, for those of you that don't know, don't know the history, we used to be community colleges. It was Indian River Community College. Um, we started offering baccalaureate degrees. So we are bachelor degrees. Nobody really wants a bachelor's from a community college. And statewide, um, all the community colleges that were doing this changed to the state college uh, naming. Um, but that's not enough. And it wasn't enough for us to um, be able to help secure what, what we're doing with the students and with the community, because we still have that community college route. Um, so over these past three years, we've established many, many partnerships. Uh, among our highlighted there with Adobe, every student that walks into this school and has a .edu address um, receives everything that Adobe has in the cloud. Um, why? The reason for that is so that they can actually start building their brand, put together the portfolio. Going back to what Kristen has done in FGCU, they have they have embraced that whole idea and leaders and the idea of, of the micro-credential and revamping what the university system does. We have to do the same thing at the state college level. So how do we how do we make our employee or our students a better employee for the, for the area. One of the ways is help them brand themselves. Um, we have all the Bloomberg technology. So we have actually more Bloomberg terminals here than some of the universities in the state of Florida, open to the public and open to the students. Um, Wolfram Technologies for the, menu, for the math um, and for some of the sciences, those are absolute game changers for students who take advantage of that. Um, we've also been able to increase, like it says, our, our sponsor programs or our research from $8 million to $28 million annually, just in three years. How do we do that? I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but what we're doing for our students is this IRSC program, the Promise program. And with the Promise program, we have actually been able to offer two years, provided the student goes full-time and maintains a 2.0 average, we pay tuition. There is no cost to the student um, for tuition. There are some specialty programs that do have some um, lab fees or specialty things that, that um, aren't covered, but in general, that whole idea of tuition free, we've got it for them. Um, we've committed a million dollars to our Lincoln Park um, to underwrite the cost of the, the CAN education. 
Um, we've got $85 million in construction, including what we talked about with the uh, Eastman Advanced Workforce Training Complex. Um, but in Indian Town, we just built a charter high school that is dedicated to the trades and along with academics. I don't want anybody to think that we don't care about academics anymore, but the academics combined with the trades makes a better um, candidate for the jobs. Um, we've also expanded our nursing program. We've actually doubled our nursing program um, in the past year. We opened up uh, just this past year. Um, so all good things are, are going there. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so I mentioned the Promise program. So what we did is we, again, allowed our students to apply and commit to Indian River State College for their two-year program. Um, and we saw the largest first time in college student cohort in our history. We increased the number of Hispanic students from 37.2 to 62.6%, um, which gave us another designation through the federal government as a Hispanic serving institution, um, which is a really good thing for us um, to serve our community as well as to get additional funding through, through the feds. Um, the interesting thing is 42% of all the high school students in our district, and we serve Martin, St. Lucie, Indian River, and Okeechobee counties, 42% of the graduates actually enrolled full-time at IRSC, highest number ever in our local area. Um, the demographics on that 43.7% male, 55.5% female, kind of begs the question, where are the other guys? Um, we, we've got numbers, um, that show that we have higher female population in our, our colleges than male. And we're trying to figure out, okay, what's going on here? Because this is kind of flipping a little bit from the history. It used to be predominantly male, and now we're getting to be more female. 57% um, of those people are Pell eligible. And like I said, a, a requirement of the Promise program was to be enrolled full-time. And so all of our students, we have 90.3% enrolled full-time which means they have to take at least 12 credit hours per semester in fall and spring. Um, and we're doing that. Um, and you can see our 62.6% Hispanic, 9.2% Black. The interesting thing in the yellow there is 73% retention rate from fall to spring. Somewhat unheard of in a community college, state college system, um, where we're actually retaining the ones that register in the fall and they're coming back in the spring and they're completing. Um, next slide, please. So I mentioned in the beginning, what, what do we offer and who are we? Um, and why do we want our students to come here and get our degrees and get our certificates? Um, and how do we help them to translate this into the employment industry? So what we're doing is we're bringing in other people. One of the, one of the groups that we brought in is USA Diving. Um, they reliquated their headquarters to IRSC in 2023. Why, you might ask, why would, why would we want diving? Um, so we're showing that it's actually the third most watched sport in the Summer Olympics. Um, it's transforming, as, as it says there, a diverse, visible, globally watched sport um, that is becoming more and more important in the sporting world. But it ties back to us because we've had 49 years of consecutive NJCAA national champions in swimming and diving. So it's the longest winning streak, consecutive winning streak. Um, in the history of NJCAA. I always joke that I hate to be the coach that one time will lose because boy, I don't know how you how you live that one down. Um, currently, we, we have three NSF centers of excellence, um, including the National Electric Vehicle Consortium, um, which is uh, playing a, a key role in what is going to be happening in our area. And we're looking at things, you know, between electric and how do we handle the, the batteries and this is all going to be tied together, and I'm going to tell you in, in a second. Um, if you can go to the next slide, we do have um, some new ideas that are coming on board. Uh, we just obtained 205 acres in Okeechobee, and we're going to create a new data park. And you may think, okay, why are we doing a data park? Well, we found out that most of the um, communications and the cable and the fiber optics that run out to the Bahamas and even serve into um, South America run right underneath our, our property here. 
Um, and so there hasn't been a new data park in, in Florida in quite some time. So we're dedicating time and effort into that. Um, we're gonna have new dormitories in Fort Pierce and our St. Lucie West um, Pruitt campus because on the Pruitt campus is where we, we took and put all those nurses where we doubled that program. Um, and we did that through something that was rather unique. When, when Dr. Moore came on board, um, he got a phone call from uh, Mackenzie Scott. And if you don't know Mackenzie Scott, she is the um, ex-wife of Jeff Bezos. And so to quote our president, thank God for good divorce attorneys, because what we got was the largest gift in the history of Indian River State College. Um, Ms. Scott gave us $45 million to develop programs that were necessary for our area. And so a majority of that was dedicated towards the nursing because we have such a, uh, a shortage of nurses and medical professionals um, in Florida overall, um, but specifically in this area. Um, we're also starting with a, a train derailment, the Haswopper, the Believe training site in Okeechobee. Um, if you don't know, the Haswopper is basically OSHA and the Believe is, um, I wrote it down so I don't mess it up because I keep saying it wrong, boiling liquid explosion vapor, or expanding vapor explosion. So how are we handling all these things that are gonna be handled by train? Um, we've got new batteries, we've got new technologies that are coming about. We have possibly the Brightline high speed train rail terminal is gonna come in here between uh, Fort Pierce and Stewart, wherever it is, we're going to be there to assist with that. Um, we're building event space on campus. We have partnerships with local areas that are doing boutique hotels. And so we have that public private partnership in place for those things. And then we're negotiating a medical college and pharmacy school to be at our campus as well. That will be independent of us, but will allow us to provide additional doctors and um, medical technicians um, for the area. Next slide, please. Um, a list of, or just some ideas of who we work with. Um, so we have so many different ways of, of working with people and working with companies, whether it be an apprenticeship program or a certificate program, online, face-to-face, -face, um, whatever it is we can do for our area, we're finding that a majority of our students, about 90% of them who graduate from Indian River State College stay in our local area but 76 or 78% of them stay in the state of Florida. Um, what, what we need to do, and our mission here is our college, our students and our community, is if we allow our students to have access to excellent education, to get all the certificates and training that they need for their jobs immediately, without having to go through the two or four year deg degree process, like getting a certificate, getting out in the workforce, we're here to support them in that initial part. We're also here to take care of them when they wanna come back and say, I wanna move on. And in order to do that, I need another certificate or a degree. Um, we provide that, that uh, tuition-free training um, because if we can change one individual and they stay right here in our area, we change the community with this. And that's through the leadership of, of our new president. Um, we have made some significant changes with with the community and we're proud of what of the work we're doing actually and proud to be affiliated with um, the future of work in the Florida Chamber. So thank you all for this opportunity. Thank you so much, Bill. You know, I've visited IRC a few times and it just seems like y'all have more and more initiatives and more and more things happening. And it's just only gonna improve the talent pipeline, which is kind of the dream. And like you mentioned, we're we're trying to recruit and retain that talent here in Florida. So y'all have some awesome things going. Um, if you go to the next slide, I want to introduce Mary Key next. She wears a lot of hats and one of, was one of my first visits when I was overseeing professional development for adult ed um, at the Florida Department of Education before coming here. Um, she's the principal CTE or career and technical education and adult ed director at River Oak Technical College in Suwannee County. Um, she's a phenomenal leader in, in those spaces, just provides a lot of guidance to, to new leaders and other um, technical college or, I'm sorry, CTE or adult ed um, individuals throughout the state. So thank you so much uh, for being here, Mary. And thank you for that introduction, Rachel. Um, but truly, it's an honor to be with all of you this morning. Um, you know, 
again, this is the, the most perfect time to live in the state of Florida um, with everything that's happening with workforce education and all the wonderful educational facilities, whether they're um, high school programs, technical colleges, state colleges, universities, um, and, and such. Um, we are just we definitely will meet the goal, um, I think earlier than 2030, of being number one um, in the nation. Um, but I'm, I'm very um, proud to uh, be principal here at River Oak Technical College. We are in a very rural area. So of course our numbers are not going to look like um, some of the other uh, numbers in some of your state colleges and technical colleges and universities. But we are a post-secondary training facility and we offer post-secondary career certificates we offer um, an applied technology diploma with pharmacy technician. We also offer adult education for individuals that need remediation prior to um, enrolling in a technical college or state college. Um, we also provide um, adult education programs for those adults that are pursuing their high school diploma. We offer English as a second language, continuing education, and also community education programs. So it's we're really a one-stop uh, service center here in North Florida. We offer 19 post-secondary programs, and most of them are Pell eligible um, to support our students in their efforts to gain a, a trade or skill. And we're we're very proud of the fact that we we serve dual enrolled students, and we've really um, set a goal of uh, working with as, you know, as many schools as we can to support those efforts, because we know that it is a challenge, uh, really due to access for students to have some dual enrolled educational programs, um, because there are a lot of barriers, whether it's transportation, um, whether it's scheduling, uh, but uh, we serve approximately, this year we have approximately uh, 260 uh, dual enrolled students. We not only offer uh, dual enrolled options here at River Oak, but we also go to the school side. So we're serving Lafette County and Hamilton County, as well as a um, high school in our own county that is south of us. So we actually have taken the programs on the road. We offer brick and block masonry in Lafette County. We offer welding in Hamilton County. And then we offer um, applied cybersecurity at Brantford High School. And we plan to offer um, additional programs in the coming years. And we have found that that is been a great tool um, to, again, give those students um, opportunities to earn post-secondary um, credentials and, and attain their uh, credential while they, or I should say, their certificate while they're actually still in high school uh, or shortly thereafter. Um, our enrollment uh, continues to grow back in 2016-2017. We're about a we were at approximately 125. Right now, we have served 671 students this year and projected to serve um, approximately 725 um, by the close of the school year. So we're very proud of that um, because again, we know that when we're serving um, additional adults, we're also supporting families. And, and that, is, that is our number one goal. So our students can support their families and make above a living wage. Um, and all of this has come to fruition. If we can go to the next slide, um, really due to all the partnerships that we have in our community. Um, in a rural area, I know that some share that um, it is a challenge, but I will tell you, it. we have been so blessed. And I think, you know, again, I. It's a great place to, to live and, and uh, to offer these types of programs, but we have so many partners um, that come in and I've listed a few, but we have so many more than that. But um, all of our programs have occupational advisory committees that meet um, once to twice yearly and they're, su they're supported with input through them and also our business and industry partners. And I listed a couple examples on the screen, but I'll share a few others as well. But um, HCA Florida Healthcare, um, they have been so supportive of our school. Uh, last year, we were pursuing uh, legislative appropriations uh, to expand our healthcare facility, and they were one of our number one supporters. Um, also, they provide um, donations, they provide monies for scholarships for students. Um, they 
Um, they provide um, equipment that may be um, that it may be outdated or it may be older and they're replacing. Uh, but in their emergency room here in Live Oak, they actually had an OR room available. So that room is specifically for River Oak. So our surgical technology program, um, we do have a a simulation set up here at our college, but to take them into a true OR to practice their skills um, is just paramount um, to, to supporting them and making them feel comfort, more comfortable when they are in the clinical settings. Uh, so I'm very appreciative of that. Um, another partnership we have is with Swanee Ironworks. And we're one, I should say one example of uh, something that we, we took on last year, but I've had a new instructor position. So we're going to um, re-implement this this coming year. But we, um, to support our dual enrolled students, um, we actually had our teacher on site at Swanee Ironworks working beside them with welding and fabrication to help support their efforts. And of course they got their clock hours um, with that instructor. Um, and we found that works really, really well, it works well with dual enrolled. And it can also work well with adult students. But that is a, a really great way to get students into the workplace, um, especially if they're mid-level skill, um, so that they can experience um, that. And also our students got paid while they um, they worked at Swanee Iron Works, and they actually were um, one of the, the industries that that worked on the Amazon building um, in Tallahassee. So we were really proud of that, that we had students working on those projects. Um, but we found that worked well. So we're gonna use that same um, uh, platform for some of our other programs as well. And I will tell you, Career Source North Florida, Career Source period, they have been so supportive of our students and they support our adult education students who are pursuing uh, their high school diplomas. Um, they also support them as they complete or participate in integrated education training programs here at River Oak um, in post-secondary uh, programs. Um, but they also help support students uh, with programs that may not be Pell eligible. Uh, so that they can also have those opportunities. Um, so again, a partnership with Career Source, they help recruit students for them. We recruit clients for them. So it's really just a, a wonderful partnership. And I have Hamilton Correctional Institution um, listed as well. And uh, our students, our, our nursing students, we've never gone into correctional facilities for clinicals. And I will tell you that our school board, they were a bit hesitant in that idea, um, but through collaboration and partnership, um, we have been sending our students um, there for clinical training. They also get tours and um, Hamilton comes to our campus uh, to talk about um, opportunities for careers. And I'm happy to say that partnership has gone really well. And we we have quite a few students that are currently working there. And, and we do feel like it is in due in part to them being exposed to other clinical settings, not just in a hospital or long-term care facility. So that, that has been a, a beneficial partnership um, between um, both of our institutions. Um, and currently they are they're building a lectern for us um, through their uh, their uh, their uh, architecture or their uh, carpentry program. So um, again, great partnership. We also take training programs to work sites. Um, Swanee Valley Electric, our local cooperative. Um, they received a few years ago, they received a whole new set of um, iPads and most of their uh, employees did not know how to operate those. So we sent a teacher over um, for just some mini, um, mini courses and how to utilize um, their iPad. So again, we offer really any program that we find that is needed here in our area. And we have a huge partnership with our local economic development um, office and board of county commissioners. And I will share with you something that, that we, you know, I think in the past, the thought was always, you leave 
you leave economic development to the economic development. Well, we don't believe that. We believe that we have to provide those opportunities and we have to, to sell what we are able to um, provide here at River Oak and also any of our institutions here in the state of Florida because businesses will come. But it, it's really a team effort. It's not just a singular entity. It takes all of us. So we're very proud to be part of that and um, part of the growth here in North Florida. Florida, because we have to take ownership in that too. Because again, it is it it boils down to serving Florida families. So thank you again, Rachel, for having me today. Thank you so much, Mary. We so appreciate your leadership and all those wonderful examples. Um, if you go to the next slide, I want to introduce our final speaker, who is um, also a future work advisory board member. Brooke Malsberger is a global talent acquisition director for rotary and mission systems at lockheed martin um, she has such valuable experience and you know has really helped us with different future of work op ads podcasts anything to really ask her so we're really appreciative of brooke thank you for being here oh thank you rachel so thank you so much for having me and good morning everyone uh, as Rachel mentioned, I am Brooke Malsberger, and I am the town acquisition leader at Lockheed Martin. I am based in Orlando, Florida, and I'm excited to share about Lockheed Martin strategic partnerships with educational institutions, really starting in elementary school to expose young minds to the fields of math and science, which as Rachel mentioned, you know, those technical skills are a lot of what we hire, um, and really all the way through four-year institutions to engage our strategic uh, pipelines. Uh, but before I do that, I'll tell you a little bit about Lockheed Martin. So if you could go to the next slide. We are primarily a defense contractor who's been in existence since 1912, and we've been operating in Florida since the 1950s. We are made up of four business areas, and our products and services range from the F-35 fighter jet, the most advanced fighter jet in the world, to missile defense systems, to helicopters, to cybersecurity, to space shuttles and rockets. Our diverse portfolio of products supports our customers' missions, strengthens global security, and advances scientific discovery. So we're very proud of what, the work that we do here at Lockheed Martin and the customers that we serve. So if you could uh, move to the next slide, I'll tell you a little bit about a makeup of our people. So we have 114,000 employees across the world and 17,000 right here in the state of Florida. Over half of our workforce are in engineering, science, or technology fields, with the other half in operations, manufacturing, finance, and other support functions like HR, which is what I'm in. Uh, we operate in 345 facilities worldwide um, and have facilities in, in 35 cities across the state of Florida. We also operate in 78 countries with 7,500 international employees. So given the large scope of our programs and the impact, strategic talent pipelines are critical for the success of our current and future business. A large part of this are our educational partnerships around the world in the US and right here in Florida. Our partnerships are primarily based on science, technology, engineering and math or STEM fields, operations and manufacturing related courses, programs and degrees since that's the majority of our workforce and our needs. We also focus on partnerships in locations in the geographic uh, location of our Lockheed Martin facilities, because what we found is that recruiting talent from those geographic areas in which we operate really does increase the retention of the individuals that we hire once they're an employee with us. So uh, if we wanna move to the next slide, I'll talk a little bit about what our partnerships look like to us. So our partnership with educational institutions starts really in elementary school. We partner with local schools that are close to our facilities to help students get foundational exposure to STEM education through programs like robotics, Lego, Lego education, and Project Lead the Way. We support career days, teach-ins, and join local classrooms to show grade appropriate practical application of math and science. During high school, students may continue to participate in STEM programs such as FIRST Robotics and Projects Lead the Way. And here in Florida, we actually hire high school students participating in Project Lead the Way for internships, both in the summer and during the school year. We also hire Florida high school graduates as engineering aides. Our partnership with Orange County Public Schools and local high school guidance counselors 
help ensure that students are informed of our opportunities available, and they help Lockheed Martin ensure that a candidate pool of technically oriented students who meet our job requirements are aware of our program. Our engineering aides may follow a career path that leads them to two-year degrees and technician roles, or they may go on to earn their four-year degrees, taking advantage of a robust education assistance program at Lockheed Martin. Our engineering aid program is really remarkable as it's the first registered apprenticeship in the defense industry that carved out non-exempt engineering tasking and a pathway for high school students to obtain roles that historically were only available to students with four-year degrees. In addition to this, we also offer STEM and vocational scholarships uh, to rising and graduating high school seniors. The Lockheed Martin STEM and Vocational Scholarship Program gives an opportunity for students to pursue, pursue STEM-related majors at four-year accredited institutions and STEM or vocational certifications and degrees at two-year accredited institutions. Scholarship applications actually open this month for the 2024-2025 academic year, and if you're interested, more information is on the Lockheed Martin website. So for those that are currently at a two-year or a technical college, Lockheed Martin has options for engineering aides, which is the program I just referenced, and we also have technical apprenticeships. Our apprenticeships are for Lockheed Martin employees, um, both new employees and existing employees who want to upskill in certain areas. We have over 2,700 registered apprenticeships at Lockheed Martin and over 700 are right here in Florida. I'm sorry, registered apprentices, not apprenticeships, apprentices and 700 are right here in Florida. So some examples of our apprenticeship programs are the Ocala Electronics Associate Program, uh, this is the largest program that we have here in Florida with over 400 participants that, that are registered. The College of Central Florida is a key educational partner in this program. And then in February, Valencia Community College will graduate its inaugural class of new pre precision optics technician uh, program participants. This is a program that was made possible by the partnership that we have with, with Valencia College to help bolster the talent pipeline of a critical skill for one of our business areas. What's even cooler about this optics program is that Valencia partnered with Bill Solomon's college, Indian River State College, on the curriculum development. Indian River had an established optics and photonics program um, and Valencia did not. So they helped Valencia really establish the program and get, off, get it off the ground for us uh, in, at Lockheed Martin in Central Florida. So we partner with community college such as Valencia Community College in Florida for internships as well. In some cases, students with previous work experience may land full-time jobs, not just internships with Lockheed Martin as technicians and assemblers and technical planners. And lastly, our biggest pipeline is our traditional four-year college partnerships. We focus on accredited universities that have strong STEM and business programs and tend to be in the geographic regions in which we have Lockheed Martin facilities. Through our four-year college partnerships, we offer 12-week paid summer internships, co-op programs, college work experience partnerships, and the scholarships that I previously mentioned. And we offer full-time offers to interns once they graduate uh, their four-year degree programs. This past year, we welcomed over 2,000 college interns and 3,500 college graduates into Lockheed Martin. The University of Central Florida is the school where we employ the most interns and hire the most graduates, not just within the state of Florida, but among any other university in the United States. So in general, we do review our engagement strategies with educational institutions every one to two years, and when we look to establish or review a partnership with an educational institution, we do look at metrics associated with the school's programs and students and how the partnership can help support our current and future needs. We are typically a well-known employer in the areas in which we partner, and we do have a really good reputation for serving the communities in which we're located, including meaningful employment opportunities. Our ongoing education, uh, collaboration with educational institutions at all levels is so important to us as we build and sustain meaningful talent pipelines and employment opportunities. We really rely on our educational partnerships for the success of our business. 
So that's a little bit about what we do here in Lockheed Martin. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak to you today. And I will turn it back over to Rachel. Awesome. Katie, you can go to the next slide. Well, thank you so much to all of our speakers today. You did a phenomenal job outlining just the importance of post-secondary partnerships and many examples of how you're making it work within the local community. Um, we actually did answer um, the different questions that were already in the Q&A. So we can kind of breeze through this slide actually onto the next slide. I want to share with you um, two um opportunities for engagement. Um, we are really excited. We are going to be doing a special edition career spotlight in February, on February 28th um, at 10 a.m. Eastern, kind of our standard time for our Workforce Wednesday webinar series. Um, we will have a special guest with us, as well as one of our future work um, advisory board members. Um, our special guest is Dr. Iman El Sheikh. She is the Associate VP for the Center for Cybersecurity at University of West Florida. And she will provide an overview of the career of cybersecurity and the career pathway, as well as free training opportunities that are really provided to anyone in Florida to earn a high value um, certification to enter this field and kind of just break down what that career path looks like. Um, I encourage you to use the QR code to register um, and that'll be, we'll be promoting this actually starting um, today and this week. Um, and we'll also have Vicki Green, um, from who is the CEO at GED Testing Services, um, provide her perspective um, from the employer side of things. Um, if you go to the next slide, we also have our regularly scheduled um, March workforce webinar um, that will be held on March 20th. And we will really be diving into our second chance hiring initiative. Um, we've been working hard behind the scenes to form our steering committee and really looking at um, developing some Florida-focused resources. So we'll be partnering with our national subject matter experts um, on this webinar. Um, so you definitely want to attend this one. Feel free to use that QR code to register as well. Um, and we'll be promoting these. So if you didn't get the QR code, I'm sure there'll be plenty of more opportunities. We'll be promoting them in the Future Work um, Monthly Memo, as well as on social media. You can go to the next slide. Um, we also are starting to think about our annual Learners to Earners Workforce Solution Summit, and that will be held in Tampa this year. Um, it will be held on June 26th, and we are excited that we already have some sponsors early on in this um, for this important workforce event. Um, we'll be talking about talent development strategies on everything from early learning, K-12, through post-secondary, adult ed, really everything in between, and just want to thank our sponsors for their commitment um, on this movement, and definitely um, that actually is available on our events page if you are interested in already um, securing your spot. I know that's always a very um, highly attended event, and I'm excited for it. You can go to the last slide. Lastly, um, here's my contact information. If um, you were interested in anything we spoke about today and want to have another conversation, please feel free to contact me. I'd be happy to, to chat. Um, and I'm really excited that so many people were engaged in this webinar. Thank you again to our speakers and look forward to connecting with you and hopefully see you on our February and March webinars. Have an awesome day. Thank you so much.